This is our final presentation for finger puppet management. Our series is titled The Boss Has Fallen and it is presented to you by Team Legacy. The Boss Has Fallen is a television show that takes place in a large office building located in Brooklyn, New York. The show's purpose is to illustrate the management concepts and topics that we learn throughout this management course. Our target audience includes detective mystery solvers, thrill seekers, and happy ending lovers. This storyline involves Kane, who is the owner of Triple Threat Entertainment. He is also a member of the Italian mob and is embezzling money from his company. Everyone is afraid of Kane except for Milton, who is his general manager. Will Milton blow the whistle on Kane's unethical behavior? Stay tuned to find out. The target management concepts that we've included include critical incident management. A critical incident involves a specific incident in which the employee's behavior and performance were above or below the expectations of the company. Human resources. The human resources approach involves a basic belief that people possess and want to make greater use of their talents and capabilities, and that if, if allowed to do so, performance and satisfaction will increase. Management. The process of assembling and using a set of resources in a goal-directed manner to accomplish tasks in an organizational setting. Managerial ethics. The study of morality and standards of business conduct. And lastly, what it means to be a whistleblower. A whistleblower is an employee who discloses illegal or unethical conduct on the part of others in an organization. Before we get into the episodes for this series, we would like to introduce you to our characters. Our first character is Kane. He is the CEO of Triple Threat Entertainment, who also leads a mafia based in Brooklyn, New York. He leads out of coercive power and fear. His employees hate him, and he is falsifying zoning statements, committing tax fraud, and embezzling money from Triple Threat. Next, we have Milton. In this series, Milton is a whistleblower, but he does not know it. He is highly likable and respected by his employees. He loves his jobs and hopes to one day own and operate Triple Threat Entertainment. Milton is the only one who is not afraid to confront Kane for his actions. Kim is the expert accountant for Triple Threat Entertainment. She is responsible, smart, and great with problem solving. She is the one who uncovers Kane's unethical behavior. But she can't risk the safety of her family by going to the cops in fear of retaliation. So she confronts Milton and asks him for his advice. Lastly, we have Louie, who is an undercover cop that is responsible for bringing down Kane and his organization. In order to do this, he needs witnesses to build a case. So he decides to apply for a job at Triple Threat Entertainment and is hired by Milton. Our first episode, The Call Out, focuses on the different skills of management. Each manager possesses three main types of skill. Technical, interpersonal, and conceptual. This episode specifically focuses on interpersonal skills such as sensitivity, persuasiveness, and empathy, which are used in this episode when an employee faces a family emergency. Episode 2, titled Kim's Undercover Research, focuses on the concept of moral intensity. Moral intensity is the degree to which people see an issue as an ethical one. Moral intensity has six components. Magnitude of the consequences, social consensus, probability of effect, temporal immediacy, proximity, and concentration of effect. In this episode, Kim discovers records of Kane's illegal behavior. After further research, she learns that Kane is fabricating illegal documents in order to cover his unethical behavior. He is embezzling from his company to support his mob ties, which is illegal. And Kim now faces the ethical dilemma of deciding what to do with this information. 
this is an ethical dilemma because she has to make a choice between two competing but arguably valid options. She's choosing between her safety and turning Kane in for his illegal behavior. Our third episode focuses on the concept of whistleblowing. A whistleblower is an employee who discloses illegal or unethical conduct on the part of others in an organization. Contrary to popular belief, whistleblowers tend not to be disgruntled employees, but conscientious, high-performing employees, like Milton. In this episode, Kim informs Milton of her discovery and asks for his advice. Milton then becomes a whistleblower because he decides they need to disclose the illegal documents and, un- and unethical conduct that has been occurring at Triple Threat Entertainment to law enforcement. But first, he decides that he must confront Kane directly about his actions. Our fourth episode, Kane's Pain, focuses on managerial ethics. Managerial ethics is concerned with the morality and standards of business conduct, especially among individuals. Managerial ethics begins at the top of an organization. Top executives must build a culture based on those values, which includes establishing a code for ethics, implementing ethics training, and rewarding ethical behaviors, and most importantly, making sure that the top executives are behaving in ethical manners themselves. Episode 5, New Beginnings, focuses on process redesign. In this episode, Milton becomes the CEO of Triple Threat Entertainment, and with his new position, he wants to start making immediate improvements within the company. Process redesign, or re-engineering, involves a fundamental redesign of business processes in order to achieve dramatic improvements. This course has taught our group a lot about management. But most important, we've learned how vital management is to operating a business. In order to run a successful organization, a manager must operate a business strategically and effectively. Managers with high ethics tend to have positive influence on their employees, which leads to the best case working environment. All in all, we've learned that successful business begins with strong management of not only the employees, but the managers themselves. But this combination enforces a healthy working environment for everyone. Strong managerial traits include being a leader, a collaborator, a motivator, being self-sufficient, and always providing a positive influence for others. I believe that Team Legacy was one of the strongest groups that I've ever worked with. Everyone was able to work together successfully to finish all of their assigned parts in a timely manner with no late submissions. We were able to communicate on a daily basis and contribute to all of our assignments. All in all, Team Legacy has been a successful project and lesson for me that I will use in the business world. When I first represented this for this class, I was very nervous especially since it required that I work with a group of people who I had never met. Our goal was to create a television show surrounding real-life situations which would engage the audience and educate them on the principles of management. I had an awesome time working with my group to develop this TV series. We stayed in communication with each other and successfully completed the project on time. While working with Team Legacy, we planned all of our assignments at the beginning of the week, which was proven to be beneficial. We all sent reminders to each other so we could stay on track to finish the assignments early. With goals of perfect grades, our ambition and strong commitment pulled the group together for a successful finish. Being able to participate with Team Legacy has been a pleasure, even though everyone has A busy schedule, everyone was able to communicate and stay on track with all the required assignments. We all worked together and were able to clarify any unclear information at the time. I'm excited to see myself and everyone in Team Legacy out in the real world succeeding after this course is completed. I am very proud of Team Legacy for this project. 
This team did a wonderful job of communicating each week and worked together as a team to complete all of our weekly assignments successfully. Our planning and communication daily allowed us to overcome the stress of operating on busy schedules. This course, Principles of Management, isn't your average course. From day one, we were working in groups and interacting with each other. In my opinion, that is management in a nutshell. All of our team members had to manage their time wisely and communicate with one another in order to successfully complete one goal, finishing the final product while learning how to interact with the team and any additional key management skills. Every team member was able to successfully contribute each week and complete all of the assignments in a timely manner. This group strongly believes that we all manage to work together towards the main goal of being successful managers of both business and life. We have several recommendations for future students. Number one, do not procrastinate. It is also important to use effective communication. There are many tools you can use such as USF Canvas email, the Prezi, Google Docs, and any messaging application like sending simple text messages to your members of your group. It is also important to create a game plan at the beginning of each week. This allows you to create an effective division of labor, where you can divide the week's assignment equally between every team member. Lastly, it is important to have a really good relationship with your team. Keep communication open and allow everyone the opportunity to be creative and have fun. Legacy would like to offer a special thank you to Professor Diasio and Jessica. We appreciate all the feedback and we hope that you enjoyed our presentation and the episodes that will follow.